10 chances to win £500 to spend on your heart and home. Every RSA home insurance policy taken out in May and June through the Nottingham will be entered into the prize draw where 10 different people will win. Speak to your local branch or get an online instant quote now. For full terms and conditions, visit thenottingham.com. So if we go to the beginning, where did <laughs> ice hockey start for you? Yeah, so I actually started hockey very late compared to my peers and all my friends. I was around eight years old when I first started playing and, you know, I got my first set of skates around six and I was in skating lessons and things like that. But it actually started for me when I was watching the Olympics in 2002 and, you know, I was watching all the females compete and I was like, wow, like I turned to my dad actually and I was like, I want to play hockey. I want to be just like these girls. And it was funny because growing up, my dad played hockey. He was a big hockey player. And he kind of was like, you know what? Like, I don't know. Like, hockey's kind of a guy sport. Like, are you sure you want to try this? Like, are you sure you want to play? And I was like, yeah, like, I want to do this. Like, I want to play. I want to be just like them. And so I remember, you know, I ended up getting some equipment. And I was by far the worst one when I first started playing hockey. Like, it's actually crazy because looking back on it now, one of my really good friends, um, her dad used to work uh, in the Mississauga Hockey Organization, so where I grew up playing, and he found my first ever hockey evaluation, and they framed it for me, so it's actually in my room, which is really cool, and they had, like, it was basically a scale out of 20, and I had a total score of four, so it was, like, they gave you a score out of five for, like, skating, shooting, speed, passing, and I literally was, like, a one all across the board. Um, so it's really funny to look back at that now. And, uh, obviously that was a great, uh, keepsake for me, but I think just, uh, I would always go on the ice with my dad before school and, uh, we would always build outdoor rinks and skate on the ponds and stuff. So I think that's kind of when I fell in love with the game. And like I said, I started pretty late, but, um, yeah, I was watching the girls in the Olympics. Well, say, I think, I think it's safe to say that that shooting rating would be a bit higher these days. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so, so when you're when you're watching that that team in 2002, who is it that captures your imagination the most? Because obviously you're you're an offensive player, you're a goal scorer. Was it was it someone up top that caught your attention? Yeah, there's you know really all of them was just they're also like such inspirations to us. And um, I think the one player that I like to watch growing up was Wickenheiser, um, just such a great player and. Uh, really, I liked watching all of them. They're just all role models. And I hope eventually one day down the road, you know, we can all be those role models for someone else and they can hopefully watch us on TV and things like that. But um, that was probably like a big moment for me. And then um, actually, which is a, a really cool story on a side note, when we were in 2014, the woman's, uh, the woman won the Olympics and um, we got to go to a gala because we won our championship that year. And I actually got to like go and sit at a table in, in the room with all of those girls. So that was a really cool experience for me getting the chance to do that. And then the men's team also won that year. So we got to go and uh, we got to see all the guys as well and see them get their rings and the medals. And it was pretty cool. Who are you most starstruck by? Um, like probably the first time I saw Crosby, I was like, wow like he sc scored the golden goal and like I just remember looking at him and I was like oh my goodness I'm in the same room as Crosby I actually asked him for a picture still have it um but that was a pretty cool experience and then also just being in, in the same room as all the girls as well you know someone like Mary Philip Poulin that was pretty cool um, well, well you'll get pretty accustomed to her and we'll get we'll get into that shortly <laughs> yeah <laughs> So you, like I say, you started late, but you still got into that Team Canada program at a relatively young age. You got into the under-18s for Team Canada. So did yeah. you see, like, once you got started, was it a, did you feel like it was a rapid progression for you? Yeah, I actually, you know, looking back at it now, I remember, um, like I said, just, I remember I would be in a lot of skating, you know, power skating, things like that. Always being a smaller player, I had to make sure, you know, things were, my speed and my skills, you know, were advanced. And I think a lot of that credit goes to just working with my dad. Like we would go on the ice before school at the local rink um, every day. So we wouldn't miss a day. And I remember actually going into my Bantam year. So that would have been the year before high school. Um, I got called up to go play on the junior team. So at the time that was like, like you wanted to play on the junior team, right? And like, that's where you got scouted and recruited. And I remember going to a game and 
all the girls were talking about, you know, they were committed to universities in the States. And I was like, holy, like, that's a crazy opportunity. And I didn't even really think about it like that. Like, I never thought about hockey, like, taking me, you know, to go to the States to play hockey or taking me all around the world, traveling with the national team, things like that. So um, when I got that first opportunity and I got to play in the game, um, I ended up doing pretty well. And I get, get, kept getting called up to some more games. And I think that's for me when I kind of realized I was like, oh, wow, like maybe, you know, hockey is going to take me somewhere. And um, from there, I actually ended up skitching, skipping my midget year and I went and played junior. So that was a cool experience, getting the chance to be a younger player, just developing and growing with all the older girls. So I was like, I think I was in grade nine playing, you know, with some people who were in grade 12. So similar to like a university type of, you know, atmosphere, which was which was awesome. So. A lot of those girls were big role models for me and helped me out along the way. So, uh, but what would you say you? Because obviously, when you went to play for the under 18s you, you won gold that year uh, with that team. What did you learn the most from getting involved with them that early? Yeah, I was actually super excited that year because it was my grade 12 year. Um, so I made it like the last year that I could, and I remember going in like to the event not really knowing anyone, and that was like the best, you know time of my life when we got to go we went to Budapest Hungary okay. and I remember I just kind of went in with an open mind like I didn't know how the tournament was going to go like I just wanted to you know perform as best I can help the team out as best I can and obviously make those lasting memories which we definitely made I mean I still talk to basically all of that world's team like we all still stay in touch and stay in contact and um, it was definitely like a really great experience and it was a lot of fun you know getting to wear the maple leaf for the first time like you dream of that like your whole life and you know as an 18 year old to get to put on the jersey was just a really cool experience I actually have the jersey right here behind me uh but we won my parents like framed it for me because it was a really cool memory so that's cool and number 12 is my favorite number so you've already become my favorite oh, guest <laughs> nice it's my favorite number too it's actually it's my birthday so I think that's kind of why I chose it when I was younger because I'm a July 12th baby so uh, and then it just stuck from there. Like, I just love number 12. <laughs> it's amazing how the, that every like hockey player you speak to has a, a story behind their number. And it's either something personal or something. No one ever just picks a random one. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. I like always try to ask my friends that question. I'm like, so why do you wear the number you wear? Because there's usually a crazy story behind it, behind every number. So well, at what point, so when you get back from that, uh, tournament in Budapest did you get to explore it when you're out there is it or is it just all about the hockey because going no. out to Europe is a pretty big deal for people in North America yeah I I think like I even before that tournament I didn't really travel uh that much to Europe I think I went to Europe once for a tournament um like growing up we had like a team and they put us together and we traveled to I think it was like Sweden and stuff but um getting the chance to go there was really cool because we were all still in school so it was like a little break we got to take a week off of school and it was actually like so warm there I remember this when we went we were all like sun tanning and the hotel that we were at was like right downtown so we had a huge water slide it was like a water park uh in our hotel and I still remember this to this day right when we get there obviously you know we're all kids we're like oh my goodness we want to go check out the water park like there's a water park in our hotel that's pretty cool so we all go and you had to swipe your key to get into the water park. So like all like 22 of us go in, we swipe our key to get in. You have to individually swipe your key. Oh. <laughs> and a couple of days later, I think it was like a day later, um, our coach like has a meeting with us and he's like, did you girls go to the water park? We got like a huge uh, like bill charged to our account. And cause every time you went in and they swiped the card, they would charge like each room. So we didn't know that. So we were always just going in, like checking things out. And um, yeah, anyways, there was a huge bill. So on the last day, uh, the hotel was nice. They actually, like after we won, they let us go in like for free and just go in for as long as we want and swim and all that. So that was pretty fun experience. And I also remember um, just getting a chance to explore. My family came down, which was really cool to watch. Uh, basically like all the families were there so it was nice to get to meet other families and things like that but um, just the food as well like the food was different so I wasn't really used to that um, so it was pretty it was a pretty cool experience. I'd say you, you think the, uh, the hotel 
that you would have to pay in advance to swipe into the water park. Not this <laughs> this system where they, they Shanghai you into, yeah. <laughs> into paying for it, which that, I couldn't it respect. It was really funny. <laughs> it was even funnier because he's like, did you guys go to the water park? And we're all looking around. All 22 of us went to check out this water park. <laughs> First thing we did. <laughs> <laughs> so when you get back from there is that when you start looking around for universities and colleges to go to then because that, that's a pretty big process to get into yeah it's definitely a crazy process like I still look back uh I do a lot of coaching now for you know younger girls and um a lot of them now we're starting to get into the recruiting process they're getting to that age and I've looked back at my process and I think most of us were actually committed before we went to the world mm -hmm. championship so a lot of girls were committing grade 10, grade 11. Um, so I actually committed really late. I committed my grade 12. I think I actually committed right before I went to the world championship. So um, it was definitely like a crazy process, like just narrowing down all the schools. You know, you're a 16 year old kid getting all these letters like from universities where I'm like, I remember I was looking at one school and I didn't even know where it was, to be honest. So like, things like that like just being a young kid and you're like I don't know what I want to study I don't know what I want to be so it was definitely a really cool process it was nice to be able to you know go through it with my family and um, also talk to former you know teammates that have been there and um, so yeah I, I just remember the coolest thing about the whole process was uh, I guess when you kind of narrowed it down to like your top five um, I think they maybe it was like top three they actually would come to like your house for a house visit so I just remember like I, when I chose Boston, like um, Brian, my coach, he, he like came down, came to our house, like had coffee, talked to us about the school and everything like that. Um, so it was pretty cool. Cause like you sometimes like see that in movies and then to actually like go through that and experience that, like being a female player, I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. Pretty that's legit. A, and then so when you look at like the, the spectrum of women's hockey in college, the, the big ones are like Minnesota, Wisconsin, these kind of places. And I'm sure they were yeah. trying to recruit you at the same time. But what was it that made you um, decide and commit to Boston? Yeah, those schools are awesome. I mean, big schools. I think for me, it was just, um, you know, the ability for my parents to be able to come down and watch. Like, Boston was far, but it wasn't too far. So it was like about a seven and a half hour drive from my house. So my parents, you know, wanted to come down and watch. They could and family and friends and stuff. But I think, you know, coming from a smaller town, um, when I grew up, like I, you know, I like to say I grew up in a small town, but it's not small anymore. Um, it's pretty developed, but um, just going into the city like that. And I was like, holy, like the first time I visited campus, you know, in Boston, I was like, this place is so cool. Um, I just remember, like, I actually stayed at a freshman's dorm and we live in um, Kenmore Square. So close to Fenway, basically. Okay. And um, yeah, like literally walking distance, I would say like, a hundred meters away is Fenway from us. So I just remember seeing that. I'm like, that is so cool. Um, all the shopping, my parents definitely didn't like that, but um, there's a lot of great shopping, like restaurants, food, seafood. So I was pretty sold uh, the first day I went on campus there. Pretty awesome. How long did it take you to adjust the uh, Bostonian accent? <laughs> it's actually funny because when I would come home, people would be like, you have a Boston accent. I'm like, no and they're like oh yeah like I had so many like family members friends they're like oh I could really see it but I obviously couldn't see it um but yeah they're like sometimes I say things and they're like that was pretty like Boston I'm like really and they're like yeah <laughs> I was like oh well, as long as but. you're not walking around sounding like Peter Griffin I'm sure you're fine <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> That's all we get in Boston, in the UK. Our big like look into that that side of the the US is like Ted and Family Guy. That's what we get over <laughs> yeah. here. That's yeah, a, that's funny. <laughs> to us, that's what Boston is. <laughs> so, so for people in the UK, that it's sometimes difficult for us to understand what, how important, how big college sports is in North America, especially the United States. So, mm -hmm. can you just give a, a a brief overview of how big that is over there? Yeah. Um, for sure. Like even, you know, being from Canada, um, our, our sports here are awesome as well, but like going to the States, it's like a whole nother level. Right. And I remember we actually didn't have a football team. So it's kind of sad, but, um, you go to like a school that has like a football team and like, they just fill the entire like dome. Like that's a whole nother level of like, just, you know, it's, it's cr kind of crazy. Like in Boston, for an example, our big sports were hockey and lacrosse. 
So you go to a men's hockey game and they had their own arena on campus. It's called the Gannis. And you would go there and there would be like, it would be like you're at an NHL game. Like they would fill the crowd. Like everyone had jerseys, like just to see that. And just to see like, you know, how everyone kind of comes together and, you know, all of athletics were pretty tight at Boston. So, you know, we'd have some of my best friends from the soccer team. So they would come watch our games. We'd go watch their games, just that support. And, you know, the tight knit community was pretty awesome. And um, like I said, going to, you know, a hockey or lacrosse game, it's like, you just get these vibes. It's like so cool. Like I'm like, I've never experienced, you know, something like that before. So it's pretty awesome. And to know it's college, it's not even like, you know, a professional like event um, that made it even cooler. And d- depend on what side of the, the spectrum you fall on. Boston is a, a huge sports city in itself. Unfortunately for people who don't support teams in Boston, unfortunately <laughs> yeah. for people who do. Do you, but do you get swept up in all that fever when you're there? You're the Patriots, the Celtics, the Bruins, the, the Red Sox. Yeah, well, I'm a Leafs fan. So, I Ooh. mean, that's, yeah, that's some rival right there. <laughs> but I'm not going to lie. Like, when I was in Boston, I kind of jumped on the bandwagon of, you know, the Patriots. I actually started liking the Bruins, too. Um, I think it was pretty cool. You know, there were some players that played at BU that were playing for the Bruins. So, um, just going there and supporting them. It was pretty cool to see them on the big stage. But um, I just remember, because I was actually in Boston uh, when they won the Super Bowl, was it both times when the Patriots? They've, they've won it so many times, I can't narrow it. They've won it so many times. I honestly <laughs> can't even keep track because I, the year that I was out of university, I came back because uh, we were actually playing in Boston and they won the Super Bowl again. So there's been so many appearances, but um, that was really cool. Like I was the biggest Patriots fan that year. Um, didn't know anything about football before, but kind of learned it when I was there. So a lot of times we had like a joke at school because all the, you know, people that were from Boston that were on our team, they were like diehard, like Patriot fans. So sometimes just to, you know, get them going and, you know, ruffle some feathers, I would be like Tim Brady. Like I would just mess up, the, I would mess up the names. Like we would be like, Tim Brady would be like, Oh, was that a goal? They're like, it's a touchdown and it's Tom Brady. So we would just, you know, us Canadians would just kind of mess around with them sometimes and, you know, keep the mood light, but definitely pretty funny. So at Boston University, who are, who are your big rivals there when it comes to playing against each other? So it's actually crazy because we have so many schools close by. Mm. Like um, our biggest rival is definitely probably Boston College and Northeastern. Uh, Boston College, 10 minutes down the road. Um, and then Northeastern, same thing. Uh, Harvard's really close to us as well. Um, but probably the biggest I would have to say, I would have to decide between Boston College and Northeastern. We get like the craziest crowds for both those games. Pretty pretty big rivals. And then yeah. do- do you feel do you feel that on the ice as well though when, when you take when you when you take to it again because it, it all starts with that pressure in the crowd doesn't it oh yeah i mean i think it's pretty cool because we have a band at our school so in boston we had a huge uh band and then boston college also had a band as well so sometimes you know we would be in a big game and it would be all of our fans on one side all of boston college fans on the other side and it would be like uh, like a band playoff, like a war back and forth. It would be so loud sometimes that you wouldn't even hear the whistle. So like just being in that energy, honestly, I think it definitely can like change, you know, a game for sure. Like it can change your, your team's energy, your team's mood and uh, being able to play in front of like the crowd and the band every game. Uh, it was really cool. Definitely miss it now. <laughs> and, then, and then when you're, when you're there, obviously you're, you're, you're a student athlete. So you're there to study as well. How did you find the, the, the studying and playing aspect of everything? Yeah, definitely. You know, when you're there and you're at school, like I like to say a lot of times, it's like a full-time job, right? You need to maintain grades. You need to maintain your playing abilities. And I know for me, the first couple months as a freshman, like I was like, whoa, this is going to be hard. Um, but like, it's amazing the amount of resources you're provided with, like, we like at any time, you know, we can meet with like professors, we can have tutors, um, we have, you know, academic advisors, things like that, that are just really, you know, looking to help us in any way that they can. So for me, it was just taking advantage of those, um, you know, resources. And I also was like, kind of like, all over the place for organization the first couple of months, like trying to get everything under my belt. So for me, I would uh, really stick to I use like a planner. 
still have one, a written planner. So that was really important, just staying organized and like trying to finish things ahead of time so that, you know, when the weekend comes, it was just hockey. Like I wasn't focusing on, you know, like, oh shoot, I didn't do that essay that's due on Monday. I was more focusing on, okay, we got two games this weekend. Let's go like schools, schools for Monday. So that's kind of what I tried to do. Just get things done on time so that, or before, sorry, that it was due. Um, so that I had time to focus on hockey and obviously friends as well. Super important to make those memories and have fun. You're only there for four years. Goes by like this. So. <laughs> At least you weren't doing it. People said to me, they're like, it's going to go by like this. And I'm like, no, four years is a long time. And then meanwhile, I'm a senior and I'm like crying. I'm like, oh my goodness, it went by so quick. So. Well, at least you weren't doing your homework on the bus between games. True. That's true. I, I might have had to have done that a couple of times. So I'm sure <laughs> maybe not, once or twice. I'm sure you're not the only one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had Wi-Fi sticks, Wi-Fi sticks for a reason. <laughs> and your your freshman year at Boston, you've got a pretty incredible teammate in that locker room. And you oh, said yeah. you, you became a fan of, of hockey because of Team Canada. And at this point, Marie Philippe Poulon has already played in two Olympic games, <laughs> which is ridiculous to think about. Not a big deal. <laughs> yeah, just, just just casually before she graduates college, she's played in two Olympic yeah. games. What's it like having her as a teammate? Honestly, it was amazing. Like, you know, going in as a freshman, you're so nervous and just having her there, like one of my biggest, like I look up to her, she was one of my biggest role models. And also she was just like an incredible leader, like just someone that's so humble, works so hard. And I learned a lot actually, just from like watching her and the things she does, you know, her work ethic, things like that. Um, getting the chance to play with her is really cool. I still remember uh, the first time we actually got to be on the ice together, it was on like a power play. And I remember she just made me this like beautiful pass, dangled everyone, comes down, makes me a beautiful pass back door. I just tap it in. I was just like, wow, that just happened. I got to play on a line with like one of my favorite players, someone I've looked up to. So that was pretty cool. Well, that's cool that you got to do that. And then I think from when I'm doing my research, you got to play with her again later on the, same, on the same line. So everything this comes full year. circle. <laughs> Yeah, I got to play with her this past year, actually. It was pretty awesome. Um, we did well together. And uh, I think for me, you know, just getting a chance to play with a player like that, I want to make sure, you know, I'm doing the best I can and competing as hard as I can. Just, um, it, it was pretty cool. I loved having her as a captain. It was and great. You, you kind of took, like, to college hockey, like, I'm going to say, like, a duck to water. Like, your points, like, from the first, time, from the first season you were there, you, you were racking up points and goals. <laughs> so you, you must have been having the time of your life out there because you, you, you obviously, they obviously brought you in to score goals. And when you do that, you feel such validation, I imagine, that they brought you in to do this and you're actually being able to do it. Now, I yeah, know hockey I, players hate talking about themselves. So. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Um, no, I think like just going in, like I, you know, like I mentioned earlier, growing up, a lot of times people kind of doubted me just because of my size and, you know, my, my game and my ability. So I think just going into school, I kind of just went in with an open mind. Like I just wanted to make an impact and help as best as I could. And um, definitely had some great resources there that helped me out. And uh, I just made sure like every summer, you know, I was working extra hard, you know, getting in the gym and improving areas of my game that I needed to improve on. And um, it was great. Like I just, I really enjoyed my experience there. And um, you know, the success that I had is like from my teammates as well, you know, getting a chance to play with some great players and, um, you know, under the coaching staff as well. So overall, it was just, uh, it was a great experience. Um, like you say, being like undersized, a smaller player, who, who do you look up to? Like, like, is it someone like, you know, from the men's side again, Martin St. Louis, who's obviously, a, 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 when he was playing, he was, a, he was in the land of the Giants and he was just skating around between everyone's <laughs> legs and stuff. Yes, I remember. He's is awesome. He, is he someone you look up to? Or is it someone in the women's game that you were looking up to at that point? Yeah, I think growing up, like, um, you know, seeing a player right now, like someone like Johnny Gaudreau, mm. Um, I look at him off the ice and he's not very big, but he's just so, you know, successful on the ice. He's so crafty and um, someone like Mitch Marner as well. Uh, just, you know, so creative and kind of looking at those guys and being like, you know what, you don't have to be big. It's, you know, about what you can do. And um, like I said, just making sure that I was working hard and um, improving on the areas that I had to in order to, you know, stay at that level and be successful. And then you set a pretty, a pretty cool record at university. You're the first player in university history to score 100 goals. 
But what, what, when you score that 100th goal, is, is there a big deal made of it? You, I imagine you still have that puck somewhere. I imagine there's a big <laughs> ceremony. What happens when you get that 100th goal? And please tell me you didn't score it in a loss. Uh, yeah, honestly, I, don't even, I didn't even know that I scored the 100th goal, to be completely honest. It wasn't until after the game, um, my coach came in. And so that was actually a crazy game because we went into, uh, I'm pretty sure it was like we went into overtime against Boston College or something. I'm pretty sure we won, but uh, I remember scoring and he came in the room and he was just like, he had the puck and he like threw me the puck and he's like, everyone, like that was our 100th goal. And I was like, oh, really? I was like, nice. I was like, thanks coach. Like I, I really didn't have any idea, but um, yeah, it was pretty cool. And then pretty your, cool experience. your last year in Boston, you do get, a, you get an A put on your shirt. I did, Was yeah. that something you expected or was that a, a surprise for you? Um, I think I was, you know, pretty excited. Like, I mean, you know, getting the chance to wear a letter is an honor and, um, you definitely have to make sure that, you know, you're leading by example and, you know, you're being a good leader. Like how I mentioned, you know, me being a freshman, getting to play with Poulin, a captain, just, you know, you want to make everyone feel welcome. Like the first, you know, couple, first like couple months on campus as a freshman, like you're getting used to everything. And that's the one thing that I really harped on was making sure that I was there for those younger players helping them you know if they ever needed to talk to me I was there for them giving them advice and um, I think that was the most important thing for me about wearing an A and being a leader was um, just making everyone feel really included and uh, I think that was pretty awesome that I got the chance you know to be an A that year and then alongside a couple of the other girls I think we did a really good job uh, with the team so it was a great experience for me to getting to be a leader for sure. Um, when, you, when you look back at your time playing hockey in in Boston what is there a game or a moment that stands out to you as being particularly special? Yes, for sure. I think um, my favorite game was definitely my freshman year. Um, we made it to the Hockey East Finals, which was super cool. And we were in, I think it was Hyannis. We were in close to the Cape Cod, I think it was. So really nice. And I remember the crowd was insane because we were playing against Boston College again, our rivals. And we ended up winning that year, which was like so cool. I remember being a freshman, like we just won, like what? Like the celebration was pretty awesome after. Um, I definitely like, that was probably my favorite memory. And then we, that year we went to uh, the quarterfinals for, you know, to get into the frozen four and we went to Wisconsin and um, we took like a, I'm pretty sure we took like a charter flight there and we just really got treated like professionals. Like it was pretty awesome that experience. Um, so I definitely remember that. Although we lost, uh, it was still a lot of fun. And the, even yeah. though you lose, do you still get to go to the Frozen Four? Do you watch it on telly or you just ignore it completely because you're not there? <laughs> no, no, no. Like, we still watch. Um, although we didn't get to go, a lot of times we would make sure that, you know, we put on TV because it's always um, broadcasted. So we would all, you know, get, get together and watch the games together for sure. And just boo all the other teams. <laughs> <laughs> we wish we were there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, so, no, we would support the other teams and just just watch and cheer them on. So it was good. And then college comes to a close. Like you said, there's lots of tears. There's lots of everything that comes with it. <laughs> well, yeah. It, and it's at that point that you have, I guess, you have to make the decision where you want to pursue properly this life of a professional player or quote unquote get a real job. What was it that made you? What was? How did that decision process go for you? Yeah, so I remember the last couple of months, I was kind of like, what do I want to do? Um, what's going to happen with hockey? Like, am I going to get a shot with the national team? Uh, at the year that I graduated was kind of, you know, in the middle of the quad year for them because they had the Olympics in 2018. So um, I ended up not making the Worlds that year. So I was kind of, I kind of knew that I was, you know, out for 2018. So for me, I was like, should I, you know, look for a job? Like, um, because you know, you need a job, like you need to make money. And we, we don't make money playing, you know, women's sports my first year uh, out of school. So I actually ended up uh, getting a job and I was working in a marketing agency downtown. So that was a great experience. And then I was still training and I was just working part time, but I was still training and um, I was doing some coaching as well. So that's like what I did after university. And then the following year, I actually got called up to go uh, play for the national team for the first time there was a couple injuries so I got called to the four nations cup which was a crazy experience because um we were supposed to go to China actually 
the week after. It was Halloween. I got the call. Um, so here I was with my costume on, all ready to go for Halloween. What was I get the a costume? Phone call. Uh, I think I was like, I think it was a cop that, like a police officer that year or something. <laughs> something pretty basic. Um, but yeah, I remember getting the call and I immediately was like, gotta go. And I packed up and I went to the Four Nations. So that was for me, that was, would have been two years ago now mm. or going on the second year now. So um, I think once, you know, I started to get some shots at the national team, I um, decided that I was just going to focus on, you know, hockey and achieving my goal and um, I've been training. So one of the unique things about about women's hockey in, in the states it was anyways that you get drafted into two leagues you get drafted into the cwhl yeah. and the nwhl why did yeah. you decide on the cwhl um for me it was you know close to home mm. playing in the cwhl uh, i was actually you know talking to a few teams and at the time when i first graduated i actually knew the coach that was coaching you know the markham thunder grew up, you know, playing against him, played with him in, in summer hockey and things like that. So when I found, when I knew he was the coach, it was um, like very appealing to me to want to play, you know, with him and alongside him and the other coaches. So that was kind of the, the big factor for me, just how close it was. And then the coach as well. And how, how did you find, obviously the CDHL was, was, is packed with, in, well, it was packed with international players. How did oh, you yeah. find competing on that level? It was it was awesome. Like I like to say, you know, my first year there was the coolest experience because you get to play against, you know, these Olympians, these girls that you really look up to, like every game was a battle and um, just being able to play against playing with uh, the best in the world was like a great experience for me. And especially coming out of university, um, really trying to take, you know, your game to that next level. Um, it really helped, you know, push me. And I, not only that, like I learned from a lot of those girls and just watching them play and uh yeah it was a great experience for sure now, uh, uh, now i've seen rookies come into teams here in nottingham i've seen some of the things they have to go through it's nothing bad like they just have to carry everyone else's bags and things like that <laughs> rookie what, duties what did what did you have to, what was what was the rookie duty you got that you hated the most <laughs> um because no one likes any of them <laughs> yeah like in boston we had the classic uh clean the bus that one was like, oh, really? Like you're coming back from a long road trip. The last thing you want to do is clean everyone else's mess. Um, sometimes the girls would just be like funny and just like leave stuff on the ground while they're leaving. Okay, rookies, it's your duty. Obviously, we um, carry all the bags, things like that. Um, trying to think of any like funny pickup pucks. You always, always yeah. got to pick up the pucks. Put the codes don't out for the it. coaches. <laughs> yeah, don't do the mistake I did once. Just leave in the ice. Being the only rookie to not stay, I heard about it for months. Let me tell you. Was it Victoria's too good for that? I, no, I I literally just forgot. Like I was like, that was a hard practice. I get off the ice. I'm like, where are like some of the girls? And then I come in, and they're just like, why you didn't piss stay and pick up the pucks? That's a rookie's job. I'm like, never forgot again. Even it's funny. Like when I skate in the summer, sometimes like I'll go out and skate with you know maybe some guys like just train like with people from my town and stuff. Uh, I always stay and pick up pucks. And one of the guys like, you know, I got the pucks. I'm like, okay, okay, I, I can get off now. <laughs> so that was probably like the, a rookie duty, but I don't really remember any that were too crazy. Um, some might come back to me, but just the classic rookie duties, you know. Well, but one, of the, one of the cool things about your year in the CWHL is that you are, and unfortunately as well, the final ever CWHL rookie of the year. <laughs> Which is a pretty cool anecdote in hindsight. Yes, it sucks that it's not there anymore, but it's still a cool anecdote to have that you are the last one of, of that. <laughs> yeah, pretty crazy. Um, like crazy to think about, like so unexpected as well. Like none of us knew that was going to happen or that the league was going to shut down. So when we found out, I was like, that that's just crazy. So <laughs> pretty cool. But at the same time, obviously, you know, it was kind of like a sad moment for all of us just reflecting on, you know, our memories and, what we accomplished and things like that so does does that news kind of take away from the high of being named the rookie of the year then because like you get this thing you had this good this first year as, as a as a professor in the professional league mm -hmm. then you get this news of that professional league so it's, it's particularly devastating for you given the start you've had to your career yeah for sure i mean getting that award was was awesome but at the at the same time you know the bigger picture was the league getting shut down like you know 
that award kind of got pushed to the side. You know, I wasn't even thinking about that when I found the news about the CWHL. So I think all of us were just pretty shocked. And um, obviously, like, like I mentioned earlier, it was pretty upsetting for us, not, like kind of worried, like, what are we going to do? Where are we going to play? Um, you know, all those thoughts and doubts and stuff like that. So it's, it's I like can't really you, remember it. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's like you've had this, you, it's just one of those, like the, how life throws different curveballs at you. Like you've had this incredibly way you're, you're a professional, you've got into the Canadian senior team and then you get this massive bombshell at the end of it. And then yeah. h- how long between the end of it and that did you decide to go with the PWHPA? Cause I'm sure given the, your numbers and, and your reputation that you could have gone to play in the NWHL. Why, why did you go with the PWHPA, which is the professional women's hockey players association? Yeah, for sure. I think I was mentioning it to you earlier, just, you know, being in Boston, right? We get treated like professionals, professionals. And when I left Boston and I played in the CWHL for the first year, I'm not going to lie, it was a big rude awakening. Like it kind of reminded me like I was playing, you know, junior hockey again, where I'm paying th- for things like sticks, equipment, little things like tape. You know, you come to the rink, you got to bring your own tape. Um, we, there's, you know, practice times I would practice we practice at 9 30 at night in Markham which was an hour and a bit away from my house um no things like health care um you know the list goes on and on and I just remember playing there and I'm like you know what like this is called a professional league but like I didn't feel like I was you know a professional at the time like we weren't getting the active resources that we needed and things like exposure like you know you couldn't find a woman's game on tv in the CWHL like Um, so things like that. And then, you know, when the league shut down, I was thinking about it and I was like, you know what, I want to make sure that I can be a part of something that is not only going to help, you know, the future, but it's going to help these young girls want to aspire, you know, to play professional hockey. And they want to, you know, not be have to work a what nine to five hour shift and then go try and perform at their best and play hockey. So for me, um, you know, being a part of the PWHPA is, um, been incredible because it's just you know the ability to be able to inspire this next generation and you know hopefully create a league that will be viable for a long time you know we might not be able to see the effects of it now but the future and these girls to come definitely will so um, we had a great I had a great time going to the dream gap tour last year there was a lot of success and I'm hoping you know with COVID and everything that's going on we're going to get a chance to play again this year because um, it's going to be it's going to be awesome and like you like you say, it's, it's about exposure. It's about, about getting to see them. Because when, when the Olympics come around, the Winter Olympics come around, the spotlight burns bright on hockey and women's hockey in particular. And nine times out of 10, women's hockey steals the show at the Winter Olympics, especially with the crazy finals and stuff. We yeah. won't get, we won't get yeah. into uh, deciding a, a gold medal on a shootout. That's another matter entirely that I know you Canadians are very touchy oh, yeah. about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very touchy. <laughs> Megan didn't seem to be that bothered about it. I can't imagine why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wonder why <laughs> but you see you see the market is there for it there there are eyeballs that want to watch this stuff and mm-hmm. and that is never more on show than when the pwhpa gets its invite to the all-star weekend for the nhl which shows that there is a a developing relationship between those two organizations which is nothing but positive how for cool sure. is it for you to see those girls on that stage so cool i mean them getting the chance to go there and compete was like huge for our game Um, all the young girls got to watch and I think the coolest memory uh, was the year that um, you know Kendall Coyne did the fastest skating competition I thought that was incredible you know she beat some of the guys so you see that and you know all the world sees that and they're they're exposed to us and they're like wow these girls can play and I think that's what we need right we need that exposure so people know you know about our talent about our skills and you know what we have to offer what we can bring like you know, we all work so hard, we train every day. And um, it, it would be nice, you know, it was really nice that they got the chance to, you know, showcase their talent to the world and things like this, you know, needs to ha- needs to happen for us. So yeah. and one of the things as well is that um, the, the women's game and the men's game have never been closer than the way they're played now, obviously, with like concussions, like it's not saying that the women's game is not physical, because it is. Yeah, but the hitting and the fighting is coming out of the men's game, it's going towards more speed and skill, which is what the women's game is. So you're kind of mm-hmm. watching the same, it's getting closer to watching the same thing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great. Just, you know, even in the summers and stuff, we train with the guys and, you know, the guys are at a level where they're just so fast and strong and, you know, but you, you do learn a lot from them as well. So 
uh, I think it's nice that, you know, we're able to work together and it was great that they were able to provide us with that opportunity to go to their showcase. So, um, or the all-star game, sorry. So it was, it was really cool. It was awesome for them to do that. And then do you have many, like, I don't think you, like you say you train with them, but do you have many interactions with NHL players? Because one of the big things you see with like, like the, the example I always use is the WNBA. You have mm-hmm. this amazing relationship between the, the NBA and the WNBA and the NBA players and the WNBA players. Because when you see someone like LeBron James courtside at an LA Sparks game, that matters. It does. I completely agree. I mean, just getting those connections. And, um, you know, I think a lot of, you know, even the NHL players, maybe they have siblings or sisters or some of them are ha- have kids that are going to grow up and play, you know, female hockey. So um, I think it's, it's definitely important to make sure that, you know, we're getting them involved and um, letting them know about what we're doing. And hopefully they, they can help us out as well, like you mentioned with the, you know, WNBA. Well, the minute you get, as an example, Sidney Crosby sat, sat rinkside in, in a in a Markham jersey, Markham Thunder jersey, that, mm-hmm. that, cha- that changes the game for everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, that's, and, and I'm sure he would have batch 12 on there because of the picture you had to get. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> he would have it printed off. <laughs> yeah, I think he'd bring the picture to you to get it signed. Yeah, yeah, in my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, you never know. <laughs> never know, you never know. <laughs> so what, one question I always like to put uh, female players on the spot with this, and you might have heard me ask Megan this question, is do you ever see foresee a future where female players don't wear cages? Hmm. Because seeing someone's face is important to be able to relate to them. Yeah. I mean, that is a great question. I think for us, well, I think my personal opinion is I would prefer to wear a cage just because, you know, teeth are precious. I wouldn't want to lose any teeth. That is exactly um, what Rebecca Johnston said to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that would be probably the most important thing for me. But um, I feel like maybe it would be like a good thing to have the, you know the different differentiation between the guys wearing you know the cages and or uh, the guys wearing the visors. Sometimes no visors, risky. Um, and then us wearing cages. I think that would be kind of cool just to like separate us. But. I would personally not want to wear a cage or a visor. Sorry, <laughs> it'd be a little scary. Like I, I look at some of these guys, like how hard they shoot the puck, and they just you know stand in front of the net. They're blocking shots sometimes with diving, might hit their face. I'm like crazy. Because uh, so one of the things I never took, because I've never, I've never hold it, held a hockey stick on the ice. I've never played the game. I, I, I'm too fragile for that. I bruise too easily. I've got no <laughs> chance of doing it. But one of the things I never took into consideration until I talked to it was Renata Fast actually says that as a female player, you're not taught to be as responsible with your stick because of the cages. So you're kind of a bit more loose with them anyway. That is so true. And, and it would take a, a complete mindset shift, something else to think about while you're playing this incredibly hard game, that, which, is, which moves at 100 miles an hour. To then have to retrain yourself to be a bit more disciplined would be difficult. That is so true. I mean, you even see the guys like with their shots, they're so accurate as well, right? Because, you know, you can't, it's very like unlikely that they're doing a high shot and it's going to hit someone in the head, right? So even things like that. And uh, I know like when we would battle against the guys, you see the, or like we're on the ice with the guys, you see the guys, they do have a different style of game to protect themselves in that sense. You know, none of them are going crazy skating around where sometimes maybe our you know, sticks go up and we're just used to it. Like there's, it's going to cause like no harm. Right. So yeah, that's definitely something to think about. And even, I didn't really think about that like that. So no, I never thought I, they, I remember like, I, I think the first conversation, the second conversation I had with a female player, I asked that question about the visors and then it's yeah, just grown and grown and question. grown from there. It's just grown like and grown. Yeah. The, the only compromise I've ever got to is would you wear a bubble instead of a cage? Yes, I would wear a bubble. I think, was, look, I think bubbles look so cool. Oh, Style. Cool. We had a player who wore one because he had one oh, yeah. eye. He had one eye. Oh, uh, I know this is this is a fun story. You'll like this. He yeah. was play, he was playing in juice. He was projected to be a quite a high draft pick. He's a guy named okay. David Alexander Beregon. He's on a yeah. breakaway in a, in a college game. The guy tries to lift his stick, misses, takes his eye out. He still no. scores. No. He still scores on the play. He <laughs> had to relearn himself how to play the game because your depth perception changes. Oh my goodness. But he scored and he's got his eyeball hanging down. Oh wow, that's insane. <laughs> hey, he's probably like, at least I scored. I scored with one eye. 
But <laughs> he's a 50, over in this league, he's got 50 goals a year. He's, a, he's, a, he's one of the best snipers you'd ever see, but he unfortunately got his, got, got his career taken away from him. Wow. In the like higher up, which is good for us because yeah. we got him over here. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no complaints there. <laughs> so then you get quite a cool thing happen again. Again for you, it's another cool thing that gets ruined for you. This time it's coronavirus ruins your call up to the women's senior team for the, your third, what would have been your first world championships. Now I've yeah. heard all about the process to getting selected for these world championships and these Olympic games where I can't believe this isn't a TV show where you go through this massive process, go, you enter this building one at a time at different allocated slots. What was your process for getting selected for that tournament? Because that, that, that process is very interesting for me. Yeah, the, honestly, the entire process since I was like under 18 is crazy. Like, like you just mentioned, I remember my first team under 18, you actually walk into a, a room, coaches are there. If you make it, you go back upstairs, get your suitcase, stay in, in your hotel room. If not, they escort you out the doors. You go to the bus, you go in the airport. Crazy. It's pretty cool, actually. It should be a television show. That's funny. Um, but for this one, actually, it was really cool because uh, of the year that we were in, you know, competing with the PWHPA and going to showcases, um, we created actually mini camps this year. So this was really cool. We would have them in Montreal or Toronto and it'd be the national players and we'd get together for usually like four to five days at a time and um, just compete and uh, get the chance to practice together as a group with our coaches, which was awesome and great experience. You know, getting the chance to compete with the best, like uh, all the time is definitely going to make you a better player. So um, that was great. And then we had a bunch of different uh, rivalry series last year. Um, so what they did was they kind of selected the team based on, you know, the rivalry series, the mini camps, um, basically like every event you went to is kind of like a mini tryout in a sense where um, that's how they selected the team. So I actually got a phone call, which is cool. And I was just sitting at home and I got a call from the coaches and they told me that, you know, I was selected and I made the world for the first time. And I remember I was just like so pumped and I remember my mom was home and my dad and I like turned to them. I gave them like the thumbs up and they were like, yes, they were, they were pretty pumped. So obviously pretty bummed that, you know, we didn't get the chance to go and compete because I was really looking forward to that, especially with it being in Canada, being in Halifax. Um, I know like family was going to come out and watch and um, would have been cool to play in front of our hometown, but obviously um, bigger and <laughs> bigger important things going on in the world right now with this virus. So, um, you know, Likewise, everyone's kind of in the same boat, but it would have been so, nice to play. That would, would have been awesome. Ever since I got cancelled, do, do Team Canada stay in touch with you to make sure you're like still training and stuff like that? Like, because once you're in that program, I, I imagine they're all over you like a rash sort of thing to make sure you're doing, <laughs> especially with no games going up. I imagine they're trying to keep you because now, now they're invested in you because you're part of their program. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. Like, they give us an, a crazy amount of resources. Like, really they line us up for success and you know, whatever we need to succeed, we can get and we have, but we've actually um, been training in hubs. So I'm training in Toronto. There's a good group of us there. There's a group in Hamilton, Montreal, Calgary, um, which is nice. So we're all together and we're able to train in the gym, uh, train on the ice. And, and then every week we practice on Thursdays as a group. So there's like, I think there's like 16 of us that are from this area. Um, so we get together with one of our assistant coaches and we all have a practice, which is nice. So we're all still um, together, involved, and we try to make those practices. They're pretty competitive. We get, we get a lot of games, a lot of competitions going on. I think last week we were playing, you know, a game and it got so competitive because like we all look really like look forward to these like chances that we get to play any type of mini games, things like that. Right. Because there is no season right now. Um, so it's funny to see how competitive it gets for sure. So, so you're a goal scorer. So who, who frustrates you the most to go up against in these competitive like scrimmages sort of thing? <laughs> oh, that's a hard one. It is because you've got to compliment the defense person who it is. <laughs> yes, honestly. Um, I'm going to say the past couple of weeks I've been on probably one of the hardest D to get around is either Renata Fast uh, you, you, uh, everyone I've told you spoke about how much of an incredible athlete she is. <laughs> such, such an incredible athlete. Like, it's literally amazing. Like, I, I like to say that girl is, like, her last name represents her so well. Like, <laughs> she's got everything. Like, she's got the speed, the strength, um, and she's just, like, a crazy athlete off the ice as well. But she's really hard to get around. And then Joss LaRock as well. Joss LaRock. She's just awesome. Like, they're both just tanks on the ice. Like, 
such good D. So when we go against them, I'm like extra hard competing because I'm like, I need to get around. And then when I get around, I get so excited um, just because, like I said, they are hard to get around. So. <laughs> and then when you're scoring in these practices, are you letting the goalies know? Oh, yeah. I let Shay know. <laughs> I always bug shit. It's actually funny. We, uh, we've been skating. We skated on Monday and I was like, I told one of our goalies, Sove, I said, okay, whoever scores, you got to buy us a coffee. Like to make it like a little competitive. And uh, she's like, okay, fine. So she went with the deal. Uh, ended up scoring. So she owes me a Starbucks, I said. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it's on record. So she's definitely got to do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> even, though, even though this might not see the light of day until late December, early January. So, <laughs> yeah. but it's still, yeah. It still will be out there at some point. <laughs> exactly. She owes um, me a coffee, that's for sure. <laughs> and the, the big news for the PWHPA, which came out a few weeks ago, is this secret deodorant deal, which is mm -hmm. just, just about how huge that is for, for you guys. Honestly, it's so huge. I was so pumped when we found out um, just to have them behind us and supporting us is going to be incredible. And um, I'm really excited. Like the opportunity that they're giving us and providing us is, you know, tremendous. And we're just so grateful for them for doing that. So it's going to be awesome. I'm really hoping we can, you know, get out there and start, start playing some games. So I, th I think as everyone was, like I said, the, the momentum that was built up by just being at the NHL All-Star weekend. Like, like, oh, yeah. Because like, when, when you watch it, like, every time I've spoken to someone who played in it, I, I re-watch it because, A, it's fun to watch. And oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just, but it's great. Fact, it was great hockey. And it, well, it's great hockey considering that women don't play three-on-three. Three. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that, fair, fair play to all of them who were involved in that. Yeah. But the fact that there wasn't really an empty seat in that building. They, no, they, people were, were invested in watching that, and yes, they were very pro USA. It was a bit quiet when Team Canada scored and won, but <laughs> still, they were there watching, and that's that's the important thing. For sure, yeah. I mean, that's that's the important thing, you know. Like, um, regardless, Canada US. Whenever we play against each other, you know, there are we're rivals, and um, but you know, aside from that, like we're all together as one. I think that's the great thing about the PWHPA. Like, we all came together and. We all have the same mission and the same goal. And it's pretty great that we all work together and collaborate. And then, you know, when it comes game time and it's Canada, US, it's, you know, kind of friends off and it's game on. So it's a pretty cool experience that, you know, like I said, you get the chance to work with, you know, some of your rivals and uh, also compete against them as well. And it's very easy to get, like, like you mentioned, like that, it's very easy to get locked into that bubble of Canada, USA. But when you look <laughs> outside, outside of there, there are other nations that are starting to, Starting mm -hmm. to create, like Finland caused a bit of a surprise at the last World Championships. Like there are other teams that are starting to come through now, and obviously Finland have got a character like Nuri Ratti in there, who is like world, world, world known. But mm -hmm. um, like you can, it's nothing but good for those when the Olympics come around that people will hopefully, well, I say this as a neutral, hopefully stop expecting USA Canada as a final and just look forward to the women's hockey final because at the yeah. minute it's just all about that one game. Yeah, I think honestly that is so important. Um, you know, as much as, you know, when they beat us at the world, as much as, you know, like frustrating it was and upset, I think what that was, was just so good for our game. You know, it just shows that um, our game's developing. These girls are becoming more skilled and um, we're all competing now. Uh, I mean, it's a battle for everyone. So just knowing that when we show up to these events, like you mentioned, um, it's fair game for anyone. So. And then when, when you look back at that obviously you've got a very fledgling career you've only really just just started getting going really so like like and what i find very interesting about that is that how right at the start of this you said that with the pwhpa that you're you there, if, if you didn't play in it it wouldn't bother you if this league came about you just want to be part of the the legacy that this thing built for people down the line and that is such a an impressive thing for people like everyone everyone i talk to says it but for mm -hmm. someone of your age to say that that's a pretty big thing to say that you might not get to play in this league that, that will eventually come to fruition yeah it, it is crazy to think but at the same time like you know from my experiences seeing what I went through seeing what some of the girls that are older than me experienced and what they went through I would see nothing better than you know to be able to create you know this league for these young girls so that they don't have to go through you know what we went through and um, I would just be as happy if you know um, that was the case as well I'm um, just seeing them being able to you know play professional hockey the game that they love and they work so hard 
um, towards and um, play it and make a living playing as well. And it's also a testament to how much you guys love the game because you, you have this league taken away from you in the CWHL. You lose the World Championships due to coronavirus, stuff, but you're still out there. You're still planning this, this uh, sorry, the Dream Gap Tour Mark II. You're still going to these, these scrimmages and these competitive training sessions. Mm -hmm. It just shows how much the game means to you guys. For sure. I mean, you know, we all play the game because we love it. And, you know, for me personally, like I love hockey and like I couldn't picture, you know, my life without playing hockey. Like I just love it. And ever since I was a little kid. So even when I get to the chance to go to a practice, I get excited. Right. So whenever we get to step on the ice, I mean, um, I like like I said, it's just incredible experience. And we're still working hard, even though there's no season right now. And with COVID going on, um, this is the time, you know, to work harder than ever. Right. So um, I think at the beginning of the call, you mentioned, you know, you got to take every positive that you can out of this experience. And make the most of it. I said during COVID, um, that was really a chance for us as, you know, people individually to, you know, get better and um, in hopes that when we all come together as a team, uh, it's, it's going to be really good. Well, one of the things was that the hockey players in general, whether it's just male ones or, or whatever, have a reputation for being very stoic and very boring. That is the, that is the, the, <laughs> the accusation thrown at someone like Sidney Crosby, that he's this incredible athlete. Yes. But he doesn't do anything. He's just this incredible athlete. And what I've noticed from like talking to, to you guys is that you, are, you aren't afraid to show your personalities. Like with you, you're, you're smiling all the time. It's the same when, I spoke, <laughs> same when I spoke to Natalie Spooner. Like you guys have smiles on your faces. Like you aren't afraid to be who you are sort of thing. And, that, mm -hmm. and I think that is, personally, I think that is huge for you finding someone that, because to, to get fans, you've got to get people to identify with you, especially in this day and age where you're, like say, you're not playing at the minute in front of crowds. That kind of thing is what's going to bring people to you when the time comes. Yeah, I, I appreciate you saying that. I mean, uh, me personally, I like to just be myself and I'm pretty happy-go-lucky. I think a lot of the girls are the same. And um, yeah, like I said, just getting the chance to, you know, talk to young girls, things like that, and just be yourself and have fun. I think that's the most important thing, right? Just make memories, have fun. Um, just really be yourself. I mean, that's that's the best thing you can do, right? So. Now, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here, but I, I'm kind of like, it's kind of like a ridiculous request because you've already told plenty of funny stories. But my, one of my, my steadfast rules on this show is that, and I can't thank you enough for all the time you've given me. Uh, uh, no, thank you. I really appreciate it. But I have to end this show on a funny story where it can okay. be off ice, on ice, during a game, something that makes you laugh when you think about it. And it can be, and I always <laughs> give this rule, names can remain anonymous. You do not have to dip <laughs> anyone in if you don't want to. okay but it, it, a, oh. a, mem a memory that makes you just laugh when you think about it because mm. the world needs laughter right now and, yeah and and if i can finish every one of these shows on a funny story that is always my goal <laughs> <laughs> um hmm, a funny story i mean i feel like i've experienced so many funny stories but um i'll probably have to go with uh okay so the first time I'm obsessed with the color pink, so okay. big pink lover. Um, but when I was younger and I was getting called up to go play with the big girls in the junior, um, I had pink everything, which is kind of embarrassing. I had pink laces. Um, I had, I, I wore my like hair down in my helmet, which apparently I didn't know this until I went to my first ever practice with them. Um, but you're supposed to put your hair in a ponytail, I guess. So this is actually a really funny story because I remember I show up, I had a practice before, so I was at the same rink. So I was coming from the other rink to go on the ice with the junior team. I just remember stepping on the ice and I remember all the girls were like, just looking at me because I was this young kid. I had pink, I had pink uh, laces. I pretty sure at the time I had a pink like bandana with my hair down. And it was just like the funniest experience that like I'll never forget because after the practice, I went in their locker room and they had like a ceremony and they gave me a hair elastic. They gave me new laces and kind of a crazy story. I took the lace out. It was, I'm pretty sure at the time I had a pink and a green lace and I put it in my hockey pants. And this lace has been like so lucky. Like I've never taken this lace out of my pants since I, since that moment. And it's like a big superstition thing for me. So the girls at school in Boston, they knew that. 
And the one time they took the lace out as a joke, like to play a joke on me. And I came in and I was like, something's missing. Like, cause it's a, it's a pretty bright lace. Like you can't miss it. And anyways, long story short, the girls ended up hiding it. And I was freaking out. Like, I'm like, oh my goodness, where's the lace? And they're like, we just wanted to see your reaction. So they ended up having it, but um, kind of just a funny story just to see how, you know, I've evolved from my first time kind of getting to play with the older girls and then uh, kept that lace as a memory, which is a pretty cool story. But. No, hockey players are probably the most superstitious people I've ever met. Yeah, in my that was kind of going on to my point of our superstitions are absurd sometimes. <laughs> what other ones do you have? <laughs> uh, okay, so that's my biggest superstition coming from that story with the lace, but um, I'm also, I, okay, it's weird. I have to have a Gatorade before every game and it, it has to, bigger, bigger and had to drink, bigger and had to drink iron brew before he played for us every game. Oh, really? <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, wow. He had, he had that them under his, he had them in his, uh, in his stall. Just really? Crates, eh? crates of iron brew. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Um, yeah. So similar, like I have to drink a Gatorade. Um, I obviously classic hockey tape your stick listen to music um now are you getting ready to to rock music to pump yourself up or is it actually like taylor swift that you're listening to <laughs> i'm like kind of like a soft person so i'm like i actually would listen to like country before a game yes like I that, like that. <laughs> that would get that would even get me pretty pumped up but there's you know the song like lose yourself by eminem yep that is like the og like if i listen to that song like i'm ready to go <laughs> i just remember like me and my dad and my brother like my brother played hockey as well like we, we used to put that song on before like his games and we would be singing it and i would be just like so pumped to play like i don't know now i hear that song and i'm just like i'm ready to go like <laughs> it's game time <laughs> so, so, so what, what would you say is like not yours what would you say is the weirdest one you have seen from somebody else and again, you don't have to name them. You can just say what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. I've seen some. Some people, like, have to put on their equipment, like, in a certain order. And it has to be, like, they put on, like, the left side first. And it, like, it's, like, the weirdest thing. Like, I remember they would put on, like, their Jill. And then it would be, like, one shin pad. And then they would type their, and they would type their skates, but they already had their sock on. Then they would put their pants on last and they had to do it the same every time. And then there's another crazy one. They had to get dressed at the exact same time before every game. So like, it's like right on like the five minute mark before we're about to go on for warm up. So like right at the five minute mark, they start getting dressed, but they can't get dressed before the five minute mark. They can't get dressed after the five minute mark. That one was funny. I was like, I'm always like stressed. Like, I'm like, Oh my God, like, you're going to be late. Like, let's go here. But they're like, no, I, I do this every time. Well, why do you think it is that hockey players are, are that superstitious as opposed to other sports? I know. Sports? Honestly, like, I wonder that all the time. I'm like, hockey players have like, you see like a lot of times the goalies will like go on the bench before the game and their eyes are like going like, like they're like seeing, like visualizing and things like that. I don't know if it's because hockey is like, there's so much going on in the game that maybe it, it kind of It's something helps. you can control exactly it's something that we can control that can kind of help maybe some people use it to calm them down uh people could use it for various different reasons but it is kind of crazy to think about a superstition like i remember i was pretty superstitious um in university like if we were doing well like we were on a winning streak and stuff like i would tape my stick the same way but if we were the minute like something was going like wrong i would change up the way i tape my stick so usually I would like tape it all the way to the toe and then I would leave the toe. Like I wouldn't tape the toe of the stick because I'm like, maybe this will help. Or I'll like randomly switch it out. I'm like, okay, hey, maybe like for like two practices, I'll just use black tape because I've always used white tape my entire life. It's like weird stuff like that. I'm like, it's just crazy how hockey players come up with these things. Well, then, then, the, then the other one is the, the lucky stick that breaks and causes the massive panic. Yes. That's, the, that's my favorite one to see the player break it in practice and they're like, oh no. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I have an experience kind of similar. I broke like my favorite stick. Um, I remember from my senior year, and this might sound so funny, but I kept the <laughs> I kept the top part, like the tape, and I still have it. Cause I just remember like that was just like my favorite like stick. Like I was so sad it broke. So I kept the top of it. I'm like, it's still here, it's still with me. 
Uh, it's it's it, weirdo. I know, like the craziest thing with hockey players. But but. All hockey players are weirdos. I don't think it doesn't matter if you're man, male or female. Yeah. It's just, it's just. We hockey. all have our fair share. <laughs> hockey just brings it out of people, I think, more than yeah. anything. I think, the sport is, I think the sport is to blame. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that will be the factor that we blame. <laughs> Not us being weird. <laughs> well, you did be. Well, I don't know. There's a bunch of weirdos gathering together. It's a very coincidental yeah, thing. Yeah, it's, you all just yeah when we all come together, it's unstoppable. <laughs> yeah, and, and then it's just so normal in that environment. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Like, you see things now, and you're just like, like someone's doing something like crazy, like superstition or something weird, and you're just like, oh, yeah. You're just used to it. <laughs> well, it's like, do, do you remember Chris Stewart had that, that run he used to do, the, the Stewie sprint? He'd come off the ice, and he'd have to sprint down the corridor. Oh two, yeah, yeah. I've two years that. ago, we he came to play for us because we had one yeah. of his friends on the team. He yeah. ran me over because I forgot he did that. <laughs> he, he just like he this. Was just standing there, and he just he was getting through the tunnel. Like. But one of our play, one of our other players was ju- just came off the ice before him. Yeah. And because Chris makes this noise when he does it, he like makes this like weird hoo hoo noise, like really loud and high pitched. I'm not going to do into a microphone because it'll just <laughs> <laughs> completely mess everything up. But like then Dylan had to like jump against the wall for Chris to come by, and I had to go against the other wall, and we were just like, oh wow. We just looked at each other and went, yeah, forgot about that. <laughs> 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 holy cow that's amazing so now every time you know he's coming off the ice you're you're getting out of there eh? oh we did that after that first game we made sure we were nowhere near <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's two minutes left on the clock and you're just you're gone well, it's a bit longer than two minutes chris had played in the nhl he didn't need to warm up the full 20 minutes for an elite league yeah <laughs> that's true that's true so it was unpredictable when he was getting off <laughs> especially the first one you don't know how long he's going to stay out there in front of the because obviously when he comes in he's an nhl the crowd yeah. packs in a bit to watch him warm up so you don't know how yeah. long he's going to stay out there and it's just like yep should have been aware of that should have been a bit more prepared for that <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome i saw actually during the nhl playoffs kind of similar i think it was it might have been either sagan or one of the players from dallas oh, um did you see that he had to be the last one so he pretended like he went off the ice so then i think it was the goalie from the other team they got off and he went back on and i'm like spin yeah, he did a spin and then came back. So he was the last, technically the last one off. But I was like, oh my. How, how do you fun. think you would have done in that bubble environment? I think it would have been really cool. I mean, getting a chance to be with all the girls for that long and like, it was pretty cool. Like they, they got a, they got to do some pretty fun things. Like they had, they, they got to do, I think it was like they had golf simulators in there. Some, mm. some had like everything. Um, but I think it would just honestly be cool just to, especially now, like I miss my teammates so much. So just to get the chance to like be with them all again for like a month or two months, three months would be really fun. Like I would love that. It's just hanging out with them and playing hockey and hanging out with them and playing hockey. Like what is not to like? (laughs) That's the dream, you know? (laughs) And and the good thing with the the whole bubble situation, it forced the NHL into developing its own personality. Like they did the thing with the fans in the, in the, in the crowd. Like all the fans are here and it's actually the fans. Like it actually like forced the cardboard, them. the cardboard cutouts, right? Yeah, yeah, it forced them to be a bit more ingenuitive because that's where hockey's always For like. Sure. Hockey is this old school sport where you have to stick to the rules, you have to do this, you have to do that. You are dissuaded from being a personality, whereas in the NBA, you are encouraged to be that's a personality. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that's one of those things. It's because it's so ingrained in hockey. It's you, if if you show some personality, you can be accused easily of going against the team, which mm-hmm. is. In, in today's day and age, is ridiculous because there's so many opportunities to showcase your personality with social media, with all these different oh, yeah. things. And you need to do it. And like you see, like, there's a reason that the NBA is the fastest growing sport in the world. Exactly. Yeah. I can get on this soapbox every time I talk about this. About yeah, well, I, I mean, going off what you said, like, that, that, that is a great opportunity for them. You know, they're not playing in front of fans. They're playing in front of TV, things like that, to showcase their personality, right? do funny things that's why I always like um like watching warm-ups because mm. you really do get to see you know the personality of the players they have some people have handshakes like I know the Leafs there's there's a bunch of guys that do some crazy stuff like they do they, they do like a like a spin like they like hold like their partner they'll do a spin yeah. um some guys will like body check each other so you, some are dancing and singing. So it's kind of cool that you get to see their personalities and warm up and stuff. That's pretty cool. And that's what, that's what, that's what the kids like. And that's what you're obviously, you, they're, they're, you're aiming to like, because 
Yeah. Because kids these days, they've got entertainment. I've I've got on 29, I'm moaning about kids these days. (laughs) TikTok. You're learning about TikTok. (laughs) I've tried to learn it. I can't. (laughs) (laughs) But in mind, I could never get into Snapchat. So it it, it scrolled the wrong way for me, so I could never work it out. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> if, it doesn't get, if it doesn't go up and down if you go side to side i'm lost you're lost yeah not used to that <laughs> yeah so, so when, when when the kids see that the, those people putting on those things and like they see you guys like with the stuff you do like, like take someone like natalie spooner as an example she's on cbc with the battle of the blade stuff at the minute mm. which is incredible yeah. for, for the women's game for her to be on that stage. 100 yeah. yeah yeah no that's awesome i think just any like i said any exposure right and you know, they get to see her personality. And then also it's pretty cool. Um, the Battle of the Blades has a bunch of female players competing right now. So it's been a lot of fun to watch, uh, for sure. It's, it's been great. Well, to, to bring you up again, that was another link back to like, like Natalie, when she was on it as a competitor, she competed against Brian McGratton, who <laughs> there's oh, always, wow. there is always That's a link so back real. here somewhere. There is always, a, cool, it's great. Eh? Like, like a lot of people haven't heard of the elite league it is growing in in, in like name value but for some yeah. reason there's always a link back here and <laughs> i can't work out why for the life of me <laughs> that's, that's good news though <laughs> so they what, always what, say it's a small world hockey especially the hockey world it's a small oh, it's, world it's crazy like, do you think how many hockey players there are in the world and how you can always link them back to somewhere it's it's i think Honestly. I think that's attributed to that especially in the men's game i don't know how often women like change teams and stuff like mm-hmm. in the men's game, a lot of people, if you're not in the NHL on a long contract, you're moving somewhere year to year. You're always, so you're yeah, like, true. You, agree, you can play 10 teams very easily in yeah. different countries and stuff. And that, that, that's what adds that network to it all. But obviously, yeah. you guys in the CWHL, you kind of pick where you play based on where you want to, to set yeah. up what you did. That's what, that's what the case was there. Yeah, we would pick, you know, which kind of area we wanted to be in. Um, and then from there, like a lot of times there'd be girls who were maybe living in an area where there was no team. So they would have to pick and, and move. But um, pro- like, hopefully when we get like a league, there'll be like a draft and stuff. So. Um, well, that'd be yeah. exciting. You have to get all dressed up and the, the nerves. Yeah, that, that, would, that would be really exciting. It'd be like the, ex- I imagine it'd be like the Seattle expansion one. Cause you're picking such a, a wide range of players. True. True. That would be sweet. And we yeah. all know that when Toronto gets its team, they'll have it fixed. So they get the number one pick. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully i say as a new york rangers fan who allegedly had a a a, a rig draft this year so. are, are you a rangers fan for my sins yes nice. i'm still i'm still heartbroken about henrik lundquist i'm still i I, I know him. that is sad but you did get the first, you did get him and he's gonna be what solid. is that and i'm very high i'm on, excited to watch him play i do like the goalie as well igor shestakin i think he is I like how Henrik was the king and he is the czar because he's he Russian. Is the king. I, I, yeah. I, I, I'm he, still. Where is he playing now again? Washington. He's playing Washington, yes, yes. Which is even worse. I saw a picture <laughs> the other day of him and someone was just like, these colors look weird. <laughs> like uh, of him in that. And he was wearing all the Washington colors. But. And so you, I, I can guarantee you he is going to win the Stanley Cup there and he's going to break my heart even more. Because he'll like. Oh, not- I know. It always works like that, though. Like he will, the year he after will knock the some... Rangers out in the semifinals. Yeah. It's written in the stars. And so true. I was I there going, I hope he goes back to Sweden. He'd go back and play with his brother in Frölunda. Have yeah. his nice certainly <laughs> signs back in the NHL. I'm like, God damn it. And for another team, you're like, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Well, you've listened, to me, you've listened to me ramble for far too long at this stage. <laughs> No, I, I've been rambling too. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why you're invited. You're invited on here to ramble. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, I, I enjoy talking. I, I also really appreciate, you know, how much like you support the women's hockey game. And like, that means a lot to all of us. And like, really appreciate that. And, you know, you have all your research and you know a lot about us players and, you know, what our league is and stuff. So that definitely means a lot. Like, I really appreciate it. Hey, you give it another month or so. I'm going to have my hat and my blue hoodie. Let's go. I've got, I've, had yes. them on, I've got them on order. They're coming to this Woo! very small town in the UK. So I'll be sat here wearing That's it. Awesome. When, Thank when you the, so much. That's going to be great. Yeah, when they arrive, I'm going to be, I'll have a Panthers hat on and my PWHPA blue hoodie. And yes. then I can switch it the other way around with my Panthers hoodie and my PWHPA hat. So I'm, I'm all in. <laughs> I'm all in with you guys. So 
<laughs> one call can wear the the hoodie and the hat and then switch it around for the next call. It's, it's because I'm, I'm trying to make the Panthers the, the the British team of the PWHPA. That's my end goal with all of this. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> at, at some point, because I've made this promise to m multiple people, and I'm going to make it to you as well. At the minute, I have no access to any of our merchandise because it's all locked away in a warehouse. When I do, I am sending some stuff out to people who have been on the show. So you will oh, get some. Oh, that would be awesome. So, that would be great. I don't know when I'm going to be able to get to it because our, to our country has just been locked down again for another month. I heard, which, I heard. Which is another thing I will not get into on here because that's, <laughs> that's, another, that's another thing I can complain about. As, as it <laughs> but when I can get into that, I will be doing, I will be following up on that. I will be back in touch and I will be following up on that promise. I've got, a list be awesome. of, I've got a list of people I owe things to. So <laughs> I'm going to add you to, and I have to ask one final horrible, horrible question because I don't, I, I want to know for my own sanity. How do you pronounce your surname? Uh, like Bach? Bach. So it's not, it's not yeah. Batch or Bach, it's Bach. Bach. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's a hard one because uh, when you look at it, you immediately think it's Bach, right? So I get a lot of Bach. I get a lot of back, uh, but it's like, Bach. Well, yeah. I, I, I told, I had a go at, uh, we've got a director of hockey over here and I had a go at him at one point last season because he was signing all these players with incredibly hard names. To, like, <laughs> and I just kept saying to him, you know, I've got to interview these people and introduce them as I do it. And I've got no idea. Like it took me a month to learn how to say Adam Deutsch because it's spelled D-E-U-T-S-C-H. <laughs> That's where you got to do one of these. And today on the show, Adam Deutsch. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Adam's here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adam, Adam, yeah. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> so, so what's your day to day like then? Like, obviously, you've got training, and then you have tra you have the, the coaching side of it. But what else are you up to? Are you, well, are you, still, yeah, so, are you working as well? Or yeah, so I got back today. Uh, we were in Toronto today, so we usually skate and then work out. And I got back around eleven thirty my time. And then um, I'm also as well, I'm doing my master's, so I'm in school. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I'm doing, I want to be a teacher, so I'm doing my master's of education. So what did you graduate um, in the first time at, the, at Boston? The first time I graduated, I was in like uh, advertising. Okay, that's cool. Communications. Um, so after that, I was like, I've always wanted to be a teacher. Uh, so I was like, you know what, I need to follow my hobby and my passion. And, you know, I've been coaching since I graduated and I've been coaching since I was like 16 like doing camps and stuff and I just like love working with kids and um so it was something I really wanted to do so I was like you know what I'm gonna do it so oh, I started okay. my master's and so that's that keeps me pretty busy and would yeah. you teach a certain subject or would you like to be a bit of everything it's actually kind of funny I actually want to teach a gym like physical, oh, okay. physical makes education. sense <laughs> makes sense I'm like it's like that's like every like person's like dream I feel it's just like a, like athlete like just to go and teach gym but um I it's think that everyone wants to go to work in shorts that's all it is they don't want to wear a that's suit that's what it is I'm, I'm like the, the shorts or for us like go to go to work with tights on like that's just like a lululemon tights that's that's a dream right <laughs> well I, I'm not gonna, I think I'm going to adjust to going back to a rink and having to dress up nicely I'm quite used to this this zoom get up with the uh yeah. the hoodie and the and the pj bottoms the comfy exactly. jacket <laughs> I was gonna say that. I was gonna say, yeah, you look all, you can look all nice up top, but then down there you got a, your pajamas or sweatpants. Yeah, that is one hundred percent correct. I got in trouble the other day by doing that actually. So I was doing giving a presentation to a school, a community, and uh, one of the girls, she was like, you look like she was like, I looked you up, like you look short. She's like, can you stand up? We want to see how tall you are. It was like one of the young kids, and I'm like oh no I'm wearing my pajamas <laughs> like I had my pajamas on I'm, like on the bottom so I like kind of stood up and I put the screen like that and I'm like ah. <laughs> well mine was I I because I, because I dress like this so often I, I forgot in one and I, we've got two dogs here that I can't have, leave in the room anymore because if someone comes by the window they bark so I have to lock them in the room but I was doing this with Brian McGrattan big tough big one who keeps coming yeah. up in this conversation for some bizarre reason and the dogs start barking so I had to go and pick him up and take him out the room and I had my, uh, my sweatpants, my, my, my pajama <laughs> sweatpants on, which have penguins and snowflakes on them and are red. <laughs> I come back in the room, sit down, and Brian goes, nice pants. I was like, oh, <laughs> That's amazing. You're like, shoot, forgot about that. You're like, just repping the Christmas spirit. It's around the corner. <laughs> well, the good news is that I found out is the big, tough guy, big NHL heavyweight Brian McGrattan has smaller dogs than me. So I felt, no a, bit I felt a bit tougher than him afterwards, despite how I was dressed. 
what type of dogs you have? We got Shih Tzus. I have a Shih Tzu. Yeah, we we have one since a yeah. puppy who is now eight, who is uh, oh, grey, oh. and we then we adopted one who has the most ridiculous name in the world, but he came with it, so we can't change it. He is called what Spud. What is it? Spud. 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 S P U D. Spud. That's cute. <laughs> and he is. I like it. Yeah, to, and we never thought ours would get on with the adopted one because he's, he's the only dog he's got on with her is like because my not my grandparents have one of his brothers and my auntie has his other brother and they're okay. the only dogs he's been like mixed with so we yeah. brought the other one in we're like are they gonna get on and they do so we have two nice. that's good yeah. shih tzus now, are the best a, though we have a sheep so ours is a shih tzu mixed with a poodle but it looks oh. more like it looks like exactly like shih tzu but it's so cute oh well, i'm convinced that the one we've had since a puppy has to be cross with something else because he's got a bit of a snout on him rather than oh, he's not okay. he's not completely uh, yeah they're like very uh with the teeth the uh, underbite right yeah well the, the one, <laughs> i took a picture of the, the one we adopted the other day and he's like got half of his mouth closed half it open one tooth <laughs> he just looks like a gremlin oh. and it's just like oh my yeah, god yeah they the shih tzus do that a lot they're so cute that's that's why i like them so much they just they look so cute <laughs> and, and they just like to lie down and just yeah relax. they my dog is just so chill. Like she just chills all day on the couch. I'm like, dogs have the life. Like I just sleep all day. Sleep like, and eat. Sleep and eat. Go for the odd walk. You well, know? as long as long as these go out, forty minutes in the morning, they'll sleep for the rest of the day. <laughs> That's it. Oh yeah, yeah. But, but the crazy thing is how intelligent they are. Is what spooks me because I'm sure one of them can tell the time because we feed them at six o'clock every night, and at <laughs> six o'clock he's up barking saying where's my food you're late with it <laughs> it's yeah. like it freaks me out because he's way too clever for his own good <laughs> it's so true they, they're so smart way smarter than we think <laughs> that's they're, they're, they're secretly just plotting stuff they're like watch what i can get this idiot to do <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome right i can i'm going to thank you for about the third or fourth time for your time today i'm going to let you get on with your day this has been no, an absolute delight and i have no di- doubt that victoria buck will have a a new f- a lot of fans from the Nottingham Panthers coming her way after this because this has been a delight. Amazing. Well, I really appreciate it. Thanks again, and it was great chatting. Hope you uh, stay safe and healthy as well. Well, safe, yes. Healthy is an operative word based on lockdown diets, but there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> Ten chances to win five hundred pounds to spend on your heart and home. Every RSA home insurance policy taken out in May and June through the Nottingham will be entered into the prize draw where 10 different people will win. Speak to your local branch or get an online instant quote now. For full terms and conditions, visit thenottingham.com. 